Whenever I drink something that has ice in it, I always wonder why the ice floats instead of sinks down to the bottom. And then I think to myself, all liquids have different weights. And that means that if I choose a set of, let's say, six liquids, some thick and some thin, then maybe I could create a liquid rainbow and stack the six layers of liquids on top of each other and make a science burrito? And then I could try to add different objects inside of the liquid that also have different weights to see what exactly would happen to those items and whether or not all of them would sink or if any would float in between some of the rainbow layers. And I know, this isn't something that most people think about on a daily basis, but let me explain why it's important. Because not all liquids are the same. Some are light, some are heavy, and their density is almost always different. So if you pour liquids into a cup, one is more likely to sit on top of the other, one will sink, and one will float. And since so many liquids have different mass packed into a given volume, then you can actually create a rainbow effect when you pour certain liquids on top of each other, and when you add the items in, you might just see something really interesting happen. And all I know is that my middle school science teachers didn't tend to perform cool experiments like this with us in class. So I had to take the responsibility of becoming everyone's science teacher and try this interesting experiment for myself to see what would actually happen here, whether or not we can make a rainbow out of liquids and make items float at different color points of the rainbow, and what there is to learn here about the intricacies of science. Because as Channing Tatum would say in 21 Jump Street, you science. So with that, my rainbow liquid journey began. The liquids I chose for the experiment to complete the rainbow were honey, corn syrup, dish soap, oil, water, and alcohol. And the items I chose to drop inside the rainbow were a screw, a cherry tomato, and a water bottle cap. I got my flask and started pouring the liquids all into the flask one by one. First came the honey, then came the corn syrup, which I've had in my pantry forever and it's basically never used, so this was perfect. Then came the dish soap, I chose the blue one to give the rainbow some color, and then came avocado oil, and by now I was more than halfway to my goal of stacking six layers of liquid. <laughs> then came the water, and lastly, the alcohol chose some Bacardi that I haven't opened for months. I wasn't sure how careful I had to be when pouring the liquids into the flask, so some seemed to mix together a little bit, but I let the liquids sit on the counter for a while until most of them settled, and finally, our liquid rainbow was complete. I made a six layer science burrito. It looked really cool, and once the rainbow was finished, it was time for the next step in this experiment. Adding our three items into the flask to see if any floated in between the rainbow layers. I figured I figured that the nail would likely sink to the bottom in the honey layer, but I wasn't sure if the tomato would float or sink, and the bottle cap seemed pretty light, so I figured it would sink but stay somewhere near the top. All I knew was that different densities of objects caused the items to settle at different levels within the liquid gradient rainbow, so now it was time to see if that was in fact true or not. I started with the nail, and it ended up sinking to the bottom layer where the honey sat. Then came the tomato. It really did float in the dish soap right in the middle of the rainbow. That one was really cool. And finally, I dropped the bottle cap in slowly and saw that it floated on the top of the alcohol. The science secret here is the idea behind density. If mass is a measure of how much stuff there is in an object or liquid, like the weight of it, then density is a measure of how tightly that stuff is packed together. Like how packed together puzzle pieces are, for example. Density and weight are closely related, but very distinct concepts in physics, so when you put them together, you get interesting reactions that take place. So to explain a little further, if a layer of liquid is more dense than an object, the object stays on top of that liquid. If the layer of liquid is less dense than the object, the object sinks through that layer until it meets a liquid layer that is dense enough to hold it up. So the screw sank to the bottom because the liquids were less dense than the actual nail, and the tomato floated in the middle because some liquids were less dense than the tomato, like the water and the alcohol. Some of the liquids were more dense than the tomato, like the honey and the corn syrup, and the bottle cap basically floated on top of all the liquids because all of the liquids were more dense than the bottle cap itself. So lighter liquids like water or alcohol way less than heavier liquids like honey or corn syrup, and lighter objects like the bottle cap are less dense than all of the layers of liquid combined. And that also explains why ice floats in most liquids, because it's less dense than the liquid itself. So the next time you're enjoying a glass of juice or water, you'll know exactly why those ice cubes float. That's right, it's all about density and your favorite science teacher, of course.